Hey everyone, welcome to Lizzie's Little Library and the Newberry Project. Today's book is the 1957 Newberry Medal winner called Miracles on Maple Hill by Virginia Sorensen. This book is, it's a cute little story. It's quite short, it's 180 pages, and it does seem to be written at a lower reading level than some of the other books. Uh, most notably, we had uh, Carry On Mr. Bowditch for the last one. And that was longer in terms of pages, and it seemed to be a more complex uh, reading level. This one, I didn't do the figures, but I would guess this is about a third grade reading level. And in terms of content and appropriateness of the topic, third grade is right on, absolutely perfect. So just as a real quick summary, our story starts with a, a family who doesn't seem to have a last name. They are driving. We have mother daddy, 10-year-old Marley, who's a little girl, she's our main character and the little girl we see on the front cover, and her brother, 13-year-old Joe. They're going to grandmother's house on Maple Hill. Dad was a soldier and had been missing in action for some time. I guess it was probably World War II, although it could have been Korea, given when the book was published, it, it doesn't say. Dad has PTSD, but they didn't use that label back then. Instead, they describe it very generically, very sanitized. Dad is tired. Dad is discouraged. They're going to Maple Hill so he can get some rest and relaxation. Before they reach the house, they get stuck in the spring mud and meet the neighbors who come to help them out. Mr. Chris and his wife Chrissy are really nice, but Dad wants to be alone. He does not want to deal with uh, small town neighbors knowing everyone's business. Um, Dad, I think you chose the wrong place to live. Uh, you know, I, I get the impression that Grandma knew everyone and everyone knew her. And uh, I don't really think Dad's going to have all that much privacy. The house has been empty for some time, so there are a number of chores to be done. Marley finds a nest of mice and is heartbroken when Dad takes care of them. She wanted to keep them as pets. Gross. The family visits the Chris family again, and they are boiling maple syrup. Mr. Chris tells Marley that this is the first miracle of the season. Dad stays at Maple Hill while Mom and the kids go back to Pittsburgh for school every week. They all spend the summer there, and Marley learns about the plants and flowers from Mr. Chris. They also meet Harry the Hermit, who teaches Joe about making goat cheese and harvesting honey. And, you know, these neighbors sound pretty interesting. I would like to live with them for a summer. At the end of summer, Mom and Dad have to decide if they should stay on Maple Hill or go back to the city. Dad seems to be better at Maple Hill, and he promises it'll be only one year, then he'll be healthy enough to go back to work. Mr. Chris has a scary health situation, but he's, he winds up fine. The family takes over the maple sugaring, but it's too much work for just a family of four to handle. The town comes to the rescue, and everything ends well. The end. Although, not everything ended perfectly, because Harry disappeared at Christmas and he didn't come back. We, we don't know what happened to Harry. Um, but, you know, aside from that, this was a, it was a cute story. It was a very sweet story. It reminded me a lot of Thimble Summer, which was the Newberry winner, 37, 38, sometime in that vicinity. It also reminded me of a more recent book called uh, The Seven Wonders of Sassafras Springs. I've read that one with my students a number of times. And it's same basic story that there is a lot of good in the world. There's a lot of miracles. Uh, there's a lot of wonderment if we open our eyes and open our hearts to see and to accept all of the goodness that there is. Very sweet story. Very cute little moral I liked Marley as a character. I didn't love her. And sadly, that's like, you know, it's a, it was a cute book. I did like it. But if you ask me in six months what I thought of it, I am probably not even really going to remember it all that much. Certainly, we could make comparisons as well to Little House on the Prairie. Uh, this one was more contemporary. I, I'm guessing it was set in the 50s. They definitely had a car and mom was driving. So I guess it was uh, written as a contemporary. But it did remind me of that as well. Just a, a sweet, simple little story of a family living in nature. I don't really know any of my students who would like this book. But I liked it. So I am going to recommend it. This was Miracles on Maple Hill by Virginia Sorensen.
Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.